Well, it's, it's been a long, long break from touring, you know, from all the COVID stuff. And I focused a lot of time in the studio and sort of thinking about what I really wanted to do moving forward. And so I'm really pushing my own label and pushing new guys coming up on my label and my own Altitude shows, which are like my own concerts. Yeah, so the label's called Reaching Altitude. I started a few years ago originally on Amada and it was awesome. And um, after, after a while, I decided to take it sort of independent and really nurture the newer talent. So the whole emphasis on it was to, to find new talent that haven't had releases before, nurture them, mentor them, and how to move forward and really support them. That's a funny story, actually. So uh, like any up and coming producer, when you first start out, no one's interested in you. No one wants to book you. And I, I used, to, used to say to my mum, like, I feel like I'm standing in the desert, like yelling, and no one can hear me, you know? And that was really frustrating for many years where I thought my standard of production was worthy of being released, but because I didn't have a profile, I didn't have gigs, no one cared. Um, and so I started the very first ever show I did with a bunch of friends from, uh, that were all at university, and that was called Altitude. It was in a tiny bar, and it did quite well for a while, and eventually we got sued uh, because there was a bar in Melbourne called Altitude. A long story, anyway. Uh, we were kids, like we were young. And so we had to change the name. The, the name change hurt us really badly and people didn't connect with it. And we lost a lot of numbers and lost a lot of money and lost everything. And so we gave it a break for a while. And then years later, um, the whole purpose of doing the Altitude show at the beginning was to start getting shows at other gigs as well. So we used to sort of, I'll book you if, if you book me sort of thing and, and started building up a name that way and, and playing. So when Altitude sort of shut down back then, I was already getting more gigs elsewhere. So there wasn't that urgency to restart it. But then when it got to a point where I wanted to bring back a concert style feeling of show, we went through a bunch of names and eventually I just said, hang on, does that bar even still exist that sued us all those years ago? And are we still worried about it? Turns out that bar had shut down like five years ago. Like from that time, we're like we can use the name now, trademarked it and uh, yeah. So relaunched like 10 years later as, as Altitude again. Keep persevering, I suppose, keep at it be a bit stubborn and, and just don't worry about what other people are doing. That's the main thing. I used to get really in my own head of like, oh, that person's shooting up ahead of me. This person's more successful. Or this person's not as good or and not deserving. And it's really um, toxic to do that. And it's really natural to do that. I think everyone does that because you're competitive and you're hungry and you think you've put so many hours in, but why are you getting nothing back for it? And that's the hard part. You know, you're, you're spending 40 hours a week producing. And you're not making a cent and no one cares. That's, it's really, um, yeah, it hurts, it stings, it's really tough. So my advice is just put your blinders on. Don't even worry about what anyone else is doing. Just worry about what you're doing. Um, and it builds, it builds slowly and it takes a lot of time and you just sort of have to push through. I think because from the start, I've been pretty broad in the things I release and what I produce, that my fan base and people that, that know me understand that I don't release the same type of record over and over. So. I'll do like a really vocal slower track, I'll do a really dark techno -y influence track and I'll do even a hard style track or whatever, just like my sets, they're very multi-genre. Um, but they sort of make sense together in a way because they have a similar emotion and similar drive and energy to it, a similar power. So I, I listen to music not as much as like what genre it fits into, but more in which feeling do I get from it, you know? So, so I like that sort of big hands in the air moment and that driving energy where you just want to go, you know? And slower tracks can do that too, and, and so can harder tracks. So different set times, different venues, different audiences means I have, um, I'm fluid enough to just cater for different audiences and to make it make sense, but still sticking to my sound. Yeah, I'm really childlike in the studio. I'm really um, playful and very little thought. I'm, I'm never like thinking, oh, I want to make a track like this or I want to do a follow up to this. I just play around and, and a lot of the times I'm just experimenting with new, a new synth or a sound and sort of play around and, and build a track from that and try and play it out in a few clubs. And if it works, then I'll finish it and then release it. So it's a very playful approach. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to get on radio or get like a lot of streams on Spotify. I'm just thinking about what do, did I have fun making because for me the process is just as important as what comes out of it you know for me it's it's fun to make music so it's fun to make all sorts of different music and to experiment and um, I'm really happy that that I think people that come to my shows get that they get that I'm, I'm not trying to do 
something else. I'm just doing what I enjoy. I use Cubase to produce my music um, and then a whole bunch of different synths which I swap out all the time and just try different things to get new sounds. I think a big part of the fun for me is experimentation. So just trying new synths and trying new samples and yeah. How I see it is like what I, what I love the most is, is the art of creation. So when you sit down at your computer and it's a blank screen, a, a blank Cubase project and you start doing stuff and after a lot of hours, a lot of time and a lot of, uh, a lot of thought and patience, at the end of it, you have a song, you know, that didn't exist before. And for me, that's fascinating. And the same, I like painting as well. So it's the same as having a blank canvas here. You just start and you don't know really what you're doing, but by the end of it, something comes out. And sometimes it's not that good, you know, and sometimes not many other people would like it, but that's okay, you still made it. So I think out of like 10 tracks that I make, I only bother releasing like one or two. So I'm not the guy that will sit down and, and nail a track and go, that's exactly what I wanted from the start. And that was my idea and that's what I'll release. I'm just more like a, just make stuff, just make stuff and sometimes it sticks and sometimes it's just like a, a DJ tool where I just played in my set a couple of times and then it served its purpose, you know. If I have an upcoming show and I'm like, oh, I want to play a really techie track, I'll just make like a two minute techie track, play it and then never play it again, never gets released. And that, that for me is exciting.